good spot. Yep. And we saw that with Moncrief earlier for the Clippers. All he could do was hit it way uptown because it wasn't downtown. Downtown's that way. Right. Well, Parmalee yesterday hit a ball to the second level of the Wendy's Hamburger balcony about 15 feet foul. Almost knocked over one of the chairs up there. A one pitch. He goes the opposite way. Another foul ball. This time it's on the roof on the third base side. Quickly 0-2. Two. two outs, a runner at first. The Clippers on top 5 to nothing. Here in the front half of inning number 6. Game 3 of the four-game series. The Clippers have taken the first two. Glad to have you along here for Clippers baseball. A beautiful Wednesday evening. Van Wart peaks to first now, deals the 0-2, and it sails high and wide. 1-2 and two to Parmalee. Uh, to complete my thought, on after that ground ball to Syriaco, I stopped. Gave up three runs, Van Wart did in his last start. He gave up two in the first, two in the seventh, but in between he had a bunch of zeros yep. just like he does tonight. There's another pop-up, foul territory on the third base side. Urshela is going to race over, but he will run out of room. Still one and two. This year, Van Wart has shown to be a high pitch count kind of guy, but that comes back to in his previous four starts before tonight, he had walked three hitters in each of those four starts. The second start, he threw 98 pitches to get just through three and two thirds, and that was a start that skewed his ERA and other stats northward. He gave up five earned runs in three and two thirds. He's been pretty good other than that. Boy, just missed the outside corner there on one and two to Parmalee. Looked pretty good. But instead, it's a 2-2 count. There is activity for the Clippers now in the bullpen. Austin Adams, hard-throwing right-hander getting loose. Now the 2-2 pitch. Breaking ball in the dirt blocked by Perez to keep the runner at first. It will fill the count. And the runner at first will no longer be held in check. He'll be off on the next pitch. Perez did that so effortlessly. He's smooth. Oh, and that was right almost off the foot of Parmalee. He was able to glove that easily by just sliding over, putting he, his glove down, came up with it in his bare hand, just in case Beresford wanted to do anything sneaky. He, he would love that. He loves the opportunity <laughs> he just to gun somebody out. There goes the runner. Here comes the pitch. And as is so often the case with two outs and a full count and a runner at first, it's fouled away. Brad Nelson would be next. And we've talked so much about Perez's offense this year, and rightly so. But first and foremost, what scouts, Indians organization, you know, people will tell you about when they talk about Roberto Perez is his defense. 3-2 again, swing and a miss, 91-mile-an-hour heater. If that is the last pitch for Travis Manward, it results in a season-high eighth strikeout after five-and-a-half at Huntington Park. It's Columbus 5, Rochester nothing.